All right, recording started. And this All is... right, so... Go ahead. I was going to say, so I guess I'll call the meeting to order uh, at 3.01 p.m. on Wednesday, June 21st. Perfect, thanks. And um, if you're joining us for the first time in a while and you've been to BLA meetings before, I will point out that the format does look different. If you're here to speak on um, a matter that's on the agenda today or give public comment, you will have your chance to do that. You'll be able to appear on camera and everything. Um, we're just going to go item by item and I'll promote you so that you can be on camera. So um, if you're in the attendees list, don't worry. You will be able to um, speak when you're, when you're at item. Um, the first item on our agenda is instructions for a virtual hearing and rules of decorum. And I'll share my screen. Okay. The city has engaged with community members to co create a vision for productive, meaningful, and inclusive civic conversations. This vision supports physical and emotional safety for community members, staff, and board and commission members, as well as democracy for people of all ages, identities, lived experiences, and political perspectives. More about this vision and the project's community engagement process can be found on our website. The following are examples of rules of decorum found in the Boulder Revised Code and other guidelines that support this vision. These will be upheld during this meeting. All remarks and testimony shall be limited to matters related to city business. No participant shall make threats or use other forms of intimidation against any person. Obscenity, racial epithets, and other speech and behavior that disrupts or otherwise impedes the ability to conduct the meeting are prohibited. Participants are required to sign up to speak using the name they are commonly known by, and individuals must display their whole name before being allowed to speak online. Currently, only audio testimony is permitted online, and that's for public comment. Okay, next on our agenda is roll call. If you'll just speak your presence out loud. Uh, Member Absalom? Member Absalom present. Member Clark? Member Carr present. And Member Roberts? Member Roberts present. Thank you. And Member Califano will not be joining us today. Um, next, we have approval of beverage licensing authority minutes from May 17th, 2023. Has everyone had the chance to review them? Okay. Um, then I, I will, Member Carl will make a motion to approve the minutes. Member Roberts will second. Okay, all in favor? Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Thank you. Next, we have hearing agenda issues from licensing clerk. There's two things that I'll mention today. The first one is that um, yesterday you were sent an exhibit and that will go under agenda item nine, which is matters from city attorney. Um, so Christiana will discuss that memo, memo under agenda item nine. And then secondly, the agenda was slightly amended from what was posted in um, the paper. We added just one more um, application for uh, boundary setting because it wasn't we're not taking public comment on those um, we were able to have it post publication so um, that's why you received an amended agenda for this one and that's it for agenda issues from licensing quick um, next we have matters from Boulder Police Department and Officer Denning was not able to make it today um, we asked if he had anything that he wanted to relate to the board this month and he didn't have anything so that's an easy one. And it looks like same thing from for agenda item three matters from responsible association of retailers. I don't believe anyone is here for this matter. And I did not receive any materials to be relate to you all. Uh, next I have agenda item three for general public comments for future beverage licensing authority. If anyone is present who would like to give general public comments to the board on something that is not on the agenda for this month, go ahead and use the raise hand function and let me know.
I'm not seeing any hands raised. Are we okay to move on? Yes, we can move on. All right. Next, we have agenda item five, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on May 9th, 2023 from PARS Gas and Food Inc. DBA Buffalo Gas. 5500 Arapaho Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80303. Sherbin Fudoni, owner and registered manager with a premise business mailing address for a renewal of a fermented malt beverage and wine retail off-premise liquor license. And if you are here to speak on this matter, please use the raise hand function so I can get you in the right place. I see Sherbin is here. All right, so are we ready for me to um, read read it in? Yeah, I was sorry, I was getting Sherman in the room. Uh, Mr. Sure. Cardudi, is there anyone else that's going to be appearing with you? No. Okay, are you able to appear on camera? Uh, I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, <laughs> no sorry about that. I can. I'll ask you to start video. Yeah, here we go. Okay. I Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, okay. I'm representing myself. Okay. Fantastic. Um, so this is a public hearing uh, before the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder to determine whether or not the application of uh, PARS Gas and Food Incorporated doing business as Buffalo Gas, uh, which is located at 5500 Arapahoe Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80303. Um, for a renewal um, of a fermented malt beverage and wine retail off-premise uh, type liquor license. Um, if the renewal for that type of license should be granted or denied, this hearing is conducted pursuant to the laws of the state of Colorado and the rules of the Beverage Licensing Authority of the City of Boulder. The purpose of this hearing is to receive information, data, and testimony by interested parties in order to enable this authority to make the findings and to reach the conclusions required to be made by state law as to whether or not the license should be renewed. Interested parties are the applicant, residents of the neighborhood affected by the license as previously determined by the authority and the owners and managers of a business located within the neighborhood. This hearing shall be limited to the question of whether there is good cause or not to renew this license as set forth uh, in the notice of hearing which was dated. It was dated um, June, it looks like June 8th, 2023. A record is being made of these proceedings. Those who desire to be heard shall identify themselves by stating their name, spelling their last name, and stating their pertinent address. They shall also be sworn in by the board secretary. Um, does do any of the authority uh, members have a conflict of interest or any ex parte contacts regarding this item that you wish to disclose? Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Absalom, no. Okay, are there any um, interested parties uh, or present or persons who will act as witnesses uh, for interested parties? Um, to this matter? I'm not seeing any raised hands. Same. So are there any members of the general public who wish to supply comment? And still no raised hands. Okay, great then. So uh, Mr. Card Carduni, are you ready to proceed? Yes. Okay. Um, very, very well then, you can, you can proceed. And before we proceed, I'll just have you um, state your name and spell your name for me. Uh, my name is Shervin Corduni, S-H-E-R-V-I-N. Last name is K-O-R-D-O-U-N-I. Thank you, and if you'll state your address. Um, the address of the business? That's right. Uh, 5500 
Arapahoe Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80303. Thank you. And then if you'll just raise your right hand for me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days before this hearing? Yes. Okay, great. And I'll allow the board to proceed. Okay, so Mr. Cordini, do you want to um, just state your situation? Why are you here today? Yeah, I just, uh, I'm here to, for the renewal of the license. It was a conditional license. Um, and I was uh, granted for one year and I'm here to see if I can get a renewal. Okay. And it looks like, um, could you just share a little bit about what you have uh, done over the last year in terms of maintaining compliance with the liquor laws? And Yeah. Um, so uh, everything that uh, we went over last time I was here, as far as training goes, as far as enforcing, um, has been in full effect. And we haven't had any issues. Um, no violations, and it's been smooth sailing. Um, we haven't had any employees, new employees, so we didn't have to go to any new training. Um, everybody's up to date with their, um, it's not tips training, it's another company that did it, but everybody's up to, uh, up to their training. And we have, uh, we enforce, um, making sure everybody is over 21 and we ID everybody and everybody does that. We haven't had any, any issues. Great, thanks for sharing that. And I do see you have in here some training uh, information as well as some, I saw some tips, um, tips, certificates. Um, do any members of the authority have any other questions? Mr. Cordini? Yeah, Mr. Corduni, I was just wondering, it looks like you have three employees listed here on the cover sheet sent from licensing that are going to be handling alcohol sales. I only see two certificates here. Am I uh, missing training? I thought I up uploaded it. Um, there should be myself and Jesus Herrera and um, Brian Gates. I'm just not seeing Brian's on my copy of the packet. Am I missing something? Um, I can like, send that over. I know uh, his certificate, for some reason, I didn't have the email uh, with his certificate in it. I just got an uh, image of it, and I uploaded that, so maybe it didn't go through because of it. But I can, I'm can. i more than happy to, to send it. It was done on the same day as everybody else. Yeah. Okay. Um, and the other thing I was looking at is your policy here. Um, did you write this alcohol policy? Um, the attorney did last year. Me and the attorney put it together last year. Okay, cool. Have you heard of the RAR here in town, the Responsible Association of Retailers? I have not. So unfortunately, Nathan Dewey, who represents that group, is not present today, but normally it is present for all of our hearings. Um, I um, urge you to look into that group. Um, they will help you as a licensee. It's RAR, Responsible Association of Retailers. Um, meet monthly, discuss responsible alcohol policies. Also a group that can kind of help you tighten up this policy you have here that I'm reading through. Yes. Uh, it's, a, it's an organization that's going to help you in a lot of ways to make sure that you are compliant with um, local and state laws around responsible alcohol service. I will look into that. Thank you. That's all I have. All right, thank you. Um, I, then we, I guess we will, was there anything else you had to share with us, Mr. Cordini? No, um, I, I really don't have much. Just, um, okay. Um, so then I guess we'll, we'll close for deliberation. Um, are there any concerns with this? members of the board or someone may make a motion to approve actually can we even approve without having that third 
um, tips training certificate on file? I think we can approve as long as Mr. Carduni does plan on getting that over to licensing and we can confirm that. Unless there's something that anyone in licensing or city or council has anything to say about that, but I don't believe there's anything in our rules around not approving a license without that last certificate. I think you guys can approve the certificate. You can um, make it a condition um, if you would like to for the renewal. Um, just saying that uh, the renewal is effective as long as you know the certificate is um, submitted in a timely manner or something like that. But um, yeah, there's nothing preventing you from going ahead. Perfect. Well, with that, I would make a motion to approve this renewal under the condition that we receive that third certificate of training within, I would say, a week. Yes. Member Carr will second that motion. All in favor? Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. All right, so moved. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Give me a second while I put everyone where they're supposed to be. Yep. Okay. Next, we have agenda item six, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on April 4th, 2023 from ABMG LLC, DBA, the Academy, Mapleton Hill, 2435 4th Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Gary Berg, sole member and registered manager with a business mailing address of 175 Bellevue Drive, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. For a new hotel, restaurant, site liquor license, and if you're here to speak on this matter, go ahead and raise your hand. A few of them flooding in here. Afternoon. Good afternoon. And Mr. Berg, well, it looks like you have Oedipus is here. And then Mr. Gamel, are you representing? Yeah, I'm counsel. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So uh, Mr. Gamel, um, as the attorney, would you like to be willing to waive the, the reading? Of yeah, the, we'll, um, the we'll make it easy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, could you just state your uh, attorney name for the, yeah. for the authority? Thank you. For sure. My name is Austin Gimmel, registration number 52753 on behalf of ABMG. Thank you. And then um, who will be speaking for this? Uh, Mr. Berg is sole member of the entity and then Aaron McCullough for Oedipus Petitioning. All right, I'll get you guys sworn in here. Um, Mr. Berg, can you state your name and spell your name and give us your address for the record? Yes, Gary Berg, G-A-R-Y-B-E-R-G, -E 175 Bellevue Drive, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Thank you. And then uh, I'll have you raise your right hand. I'll swear you in. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? I do. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to the hearing? I do. Great. And then I'll have um, our Oedipus representative next. If you'll say your name and spell your name for the record. Erin McCullough, E-R-I-N, last name M-C-C-U-L-L-O-U-G-H. Thank you. And if you can give an address for me. 17334. East Twinberry Street, Parker, Colorado, 
8, 80134. Thank you. And then um, if you'll just raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? I do. Great. I'll let the board proceed. Okay. And I should ask uh, if any board members have any uh, conflicts of interest or ex parte com conflicts they'd like to disclose. Uh, Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Absalom, no. Okay, very good. Um, Mr. Kamel, you can proceed. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm going to start with Ms. McCullough from Oedipus Petitioning so she can give her quick overview of the results and she can be on her way. Um, Aaron, I won't ask you any questions. If you could just please go through the overview of uh, petition methodology and the results you obtained for the board, that'd be super helpful. Sure. Um, Oedipus Petitioning was engaged to perform a petition survey of the designated area to determine the needs and desires for the application of ABMG LLC doing business as the Academy Mapleton Hill. Uh, payment for our services was received up front and the Academy Mapleton Hill was informed that we cannot guarantee results. Um, the designated area consisted of the businesses along Pearl Street, as well as the residential area, um, basically to the east of the location, both north and south. Of the accessible business and residential dwellings, a, a wide ranging sample of the designated area was surveyed for this petition over two days of, or three days of surveying on June 5th, 8th, and 11th. Um, as far as the results, Business owners, managers, and residents were informed that the Academy Mapleton Hill was applying for a hotel and restaurant liquor license. Uh, they were asked if they were over the age of 21 and if they would be willing to provide their opinion on the license's issuance as fully detailed on the petition forms. Out of the 341 potential contacts that, we, um, that were surveyed, um, 171 of the businesses and residences were not available or not at home or business managers not available. We were able to make contact with 170 people. Of that number, 26 preferred not to participate, four were neutral uh, to the outcome and five were not qualified to sign. Of the remaining participants, participants, 132 signatures were in favor of issuance of the license, which included um, 56 businesses and 76 residences, um, and three were against issuance, two of which were against the development uh, of the retirement community just in general, and one um, of the people who was against it, she stated that it wasn't needed or seemed dangerous. Uh, zero signatures were deleted, and overall the general feedback we received was extremely positive as residents and businesses are excited for this new opportunity. 97.78% um, of those who participated were in favor of issuance. Great, thanks so much, Aaron. I don't have any further questions for you. The board may have a few questions, but otherwise, thanks for the results. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone on the board have any questions? I do not. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Aaron, uh, feel free. You can hang out if you want. Um, watch some boring testimony, no problem. Otherwise, uh, you're free to leave and go about your day. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great. My next witness will be Mr. Berg. All right. Gary, thanks for joining us today. Um, I've already spelled your name, stated it for the record. If you could just go ahead and give your position on behalf of the licensee, we'll start with that. Sure. Um, I've been associated with the Academy for over 30 years, a co-founder. Um, we are an upscale retirement community. Um, we're building a new one at Mapleton, at 4th and Mapleton, and uh, it will consist of 91 independent residences, 40 skilled nursing suites, and 10 memory care suites. Um, the independent living residents uh, years ago found it very beneficial for us to get a liquor license at our original location near Chautauqua Park. And so we've had that for quite a number of years now. Um, and uh, 
we plan to do the same thing, hopefully, at Mapleton Hill. Um, in terms of scope, I think it's probably quite a bit different than most of the uh, situations you encounter in that the liquor uh, sales, beer, wine, spirits, uh, really represents a very, very small percentage of our total revenues. It's a small portion of what we do. We run a restaurant, we provide healthcare, we um, have activities, we have a gym, we have a pool, we have so many different aspects to try to keep elders' lives as vibrant as possible. And uh, this is a small part of it, but one that they appreciate. And so um, having known a number of people in the restaurant world, um, I know sometimes you look at percentage of uh, alcohol sales compared to food. Well, percentage of alcohol sales projected here compared to our overall revenues from all of our operations would be under 1% of, of total revenue. So it's a, it's a small part, but an important part. Great. Thanks so much for that little bit of detailed background. So I'm going to just jump right into, we'll kind of jump around a little bit. Uh, based on your testimony, it sounds like you, you also have another retirement facility with the liquor license in Boulder currently, right? That's correct. Okay. And how many years, and uh, sorry, you're also uh, on that liquor license as well. Is that correct? Yes. And that's also another hotel and restaurant liquor license? Yes. How many years would you approximate that you've had that other liquor license? Uh, if I had to guess, I'd say about 15 years. Okay. Have you ever, ever had any sort of liquor violation during those 15 years? No. Okay. And so when do you envision this new retirement facility, Mapleton Hill, uh, being open? We hope to be open uh, second half of August of this year. Okay. So right now you're still in construction phase? Yes. Okay. Uh, you've already kind of given us a little bit of the, the concept, but our understanding is you're only licensing, I guess, the recreational side of the, the retirement facility. Is that correct? Yes. We're acutely aware of the um, all or nothing aspect of uh, licensing particular spaces. And we know our residents are going to want uh, to have their own uh, beer or wine in their residence. And so we're really trying to license the common areas where they would want us to be able to serve them, uh, recognizing that that's an area where they're not allowed to bring their own alcohol. So uh, we chose that those areas very carefully. Great. And could you just kind of give us an overview? You already started to by saying a restaurant, but can you give us an idea of the other services that this licensed area will be offering to residents and their guests? Well, we have a what we call the Grand Hall, which is the one large room in the in the eastern side of the Mapleton building. And you can think of that as a as a ballroom in a hotel. Um, we have a lot of concerts there. We have a great relationship with the College of Music at the University of Colorado. Uh, we've hosted their gala, for example, every year uh, as a give back to the community. And uh, so we uh, serve uh, wine and, and spirits at that gala. We typically host uh, at least one nonprofit per year on a, again, a give back to the community where we don't charge them. We just uh, ask that they get their donors to come for a free meal and free, free wine and beer, et cetera. Um, again, as a give back to the community, there's so many good charities and yet we uh, rotate that uh, gift, if you will, um, so that we can try to reach out to as many as possible. Um, and so that room is a great example of multi-purpose. Um, we'll have uh, bigger events where everyone wants to dine together, like New Year's Eve for our residents uh, and Mother's Day brunch, uh, et cetera. We've got separate dining rooms. The, dining, the main dining room area is divided into six or seven smaller dining rooms, so it doesn't feel institutional. Um, and that's where most of the meal services would occur. But in that grand hall, that's an area where uh, we would have special events. And so we wanted to license that, for example. Great. And you also have a theater and game room too, is that correct? That's correct. So we'll use that theater and game room, the theater in particular, certainly for movies, uh, but also if we have a concert or a 
uh, speaker where we're expecting the audience to be in the range of 25 to 35 people. The grand hall is just too big uh, and it would feel overwhelming for a smaller group. And so we'll use the movie theater for that sort of thing. Okay. And kind of focusing back in on the dining room as well as the bar area, those seem to be a little bit more consistent in terms of operations. So what hours are you envisioning for the dining room? And second question on that, when will the bar be open during that time? So the, the bar will serve as a barista station in the morning. Uh, we serve three meals a day. Um, and I suppose over the years, there's been a few people that would have uh, an alcoholic beverage at lunchtime sometimes, but it's pretty rare. Nothing at breakfast, although we do have a champagne brunch on Sunday. So if you count that as breakfast, it's like from 11 to 1. But to your question of hours, uh, we're going to work with the residents that are moving in to find out what they want those hours to be. But I'll tell you what they are at University Hill, and I expect them to be similar. University Hill breakfast is from 7 till 10. Lunch is from 12 o'clock until 1.30. And dinner is from 5 o'clock uh, with the last seating at 7. Uh, the group moving into Mapleton is younger. I would anticipate that that five to seven would probably be five to seven thirty, or perhaps five o'clock to eight o'clock. Um, the bar is open uh, during those that full dinner hour, or those dinner hours, I guess I should say. Um, I think that answers your questions. Yeah, it does. Perfect. No, that's great. I appreciate that. And. With that being said, since this is a bigger space, obviously, like you said, multi-purpose, how many employees do you envision staffing in this in this type of space? It's a pretty high staff ratio. Um, in the dinner space, we would have fewer at breakfast, probably four, um, probably half dozen to 10 at lunch and anywhere from 10 to 20 in the evening, depending upon which day of the week and what we were anticipating in terms of uh, uh, number of patrons. Okay, so 10 to 20 in the dining facilities, but what about the other facilities as well in terms of the liquor licensed area? How many employees do you envision on having around those areas? So if we're in the Grand Hall, those are bigger events that uh, require uh, even more people. So we would have 10 to 20 in that event, unless it was a smaller uh, situation going on, but if there was alcohol being served, there's typically more people. Okay. And are those employees typically, are they full service in terms of, you know, sit down meals, waiter, waitress, taking your orders? Is that what you're envisioning? Yeah, it's uh, a la carte. So uh, people can have as many courses as they want and it is order off the menu, custom made, et cetera. Okay. And what type of training are you envisioning on doing for your employees who will be handling, serving, even monitoring alcohol consumption? So we tips train everybody at University of and we'll do the same thing at Mapleton. Okay. And with that being said, do you also have your own stated policies for employee training? You know, such, I know also the healthcare aspects, but in terms of just monitoring alcohol consumption in, in the premises, do you envision on having uh, training with each of those policies as well? Uh, yes, for sure. And then an added uh, element that can make things a little bit complicated. We we have full-time nurses on staff and uh, we just have to pay careful attention to specific individual medical situations where you might have someone on a medication either temporarily or permanently that contraindicates the use of alcohol. And so we just have to stay highly attuned to that, which kind of goes beyond what a normal uh, perhaps restaurant would, would encounter. Great. And just to kind of hit this point home, before you opened, do you envision having all the staff um, serve safe or tips trained before any sort of alcohol service starts? Correct. Okay. That being said, since this is such a large space too, how will these employees, I guess, monitor alcohol consumption in the business? For instance, if residents or guests are taking alcoholic drinks to the game room or taking alcoholic drinks to the theater, or they're trying to walk out of the recreational facility with alcoholic drinks, how is your staff going to manage that sort of flow through this recreational area? Well, that type of flow 
will be fairly unusual. And we are, our service standards are such that I think our team would say, can I take that for you? Um, you know, we have folks, you know, as you age, you start to run into mobility issues and that sort of thing. The last thing we want is for them to be walking around with a, with a glass in their hand. Um, and also we have to say that there are certain areas that are not licensed and we need to monitor where that drinking is going to make sure that, that we stay within the confines of the law. Great. And will you have at least front desk staff or other types of staff at like major uh, entry or exit ways to ensure that people aren't walking in with alcohol or walking out with alcohol? Yeah, there's only one unlocked door uh, and that door is staffed 24 seven um, and is locked temporarily. For example, overnight we have a security guard and if he or she needs to use the restroom, they'll lock the door and use the restroom and then come back. And so that's the only unlocked door uh, and, and they know to watch for such things. Great. And all your patios are fenced as well, correct? Right. Okay. See if I have anything else for you. And given that residents can bring guests in, if, for instance, um, you had one individual come up to the bar and try to order multiple drinks, for uh, you know a bunch of guests or residents how would your staff kind of handle that situation well it's easier than you might think because we have repeat customers every night and so we anticipate having about 150 residents which sounds like a lot but when they are the only customers for the most part it's very easy to tell who is a newcomer whether it's a grandchild or a child or uh, a brother or never um the other thing that's very cool is that our residents know all of our staff members and they, in essence, I, I like to joke that in the dining room, uh, every new dining room employee inherits 150 new grandparents and the relationship is rich enough that um, the last thing any of our residents would want to do is get one of these grandchildren of theirs into trouble. And so it's very easy to say, I could lose my job, we could lose our liquor license, et cetera. Uh, and the peer pressure is such that, I mean, we just were fortunate. We have a very amazing group of residents who, you know, they understand the law. They behave in a civil fashion. We don't have any toga parties, or at least we haven't had any yet. Great. And my last question for you is just in general, you kind of already hit on this, but why, why did you pick or why did your group pick this location for its next retirement facility? Well, it's a magical spot, you know, to have Mableton Hill historic neighborhood as your neighbors to the south and the east and to have uh, Sanitas or I've been lectured that you have no gravitas if you don't say Sanitas, but whether it's Sanitas or Sanitas as your neighbor to the west is pretty special. And so it's 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 a really great spot. And, you know, too many times I think elder communities are located on the outskirts of town where land is cheap. And this was a unique opportunity to create a really special community. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Berg. I don't have any further questions for you. The board members may have a few, but thanks again for your thorough explanations. Of course. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Berg. Thank you, Mr. Jamel. Um, do any board members have any questions for Mr. Berg? I just had one around training, and I think you may have answered this only because you are still in the process of hiring up and setting up your staff. That's why we haven't seen any training yet. Um, and I guess my other question around that is, it, it did seem slightly ambiguous about, so just round about how many people are going to be selling or handling alcohol sales overall? Total number of employees, as opposed to number of employees on a given night, um, total number of employees will probably number around 20. So we'll just look forward to seeing the, that proof of training once we get those people lined up. Um, your alcohol policy is fantastic. I just read through that in the supplement that was sent to me. Um, and yeah, I didn't see any drinks on the menu, but um, I'm just the way that you presented today, I'm assuming that you, <laughs> you guys aren't doing Long Island iced teas or uh, pitchers of drinks or anything like that. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I had no other questions. All right. Uh, any, any, seeing no other questions from the board and having none myself, um, Mr. Jamel, Mr. Berge, last uh, comments or anything you'd like to say? 
I believe so. I think we wrapped it all up. We could go for hours, though. Trust us. <laughs> all right. Um, well, then I will uh, open up for um, to, to the board, to the authority, um, to make a motion to approve. And what wants to do that? Yeah, I just I wanted to say that I thought that testament was great and just reading that alcohol policy, really good stuff and really appreciated for taking care of um, our community this way. So I would make a motion to approve this new um, hotel restaurant type license. I'll second that. Perfect. All in favor? Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. All right, so moved. Thank you so Thank much. You for your time. Really Thanks appreciate you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. All right. Um, next, we have agenda item seven, which is public hearing and consideration of an application filed on April 6, 2023 from Market and Wine, LLC, DBA Market and Wine, 3303 Bluff Street, Broadway, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Uh, Mackenzie Leah Terzian, 100% owner with the business mailing address of 3812 Northbrook Drive, Boulder, Colorado, 80304 for a new retail store liquor type liquor license. Excuse me. And then if you're here to speak on this matter, please raise your hand. All right, give me one second while I give everyone where they're supposed to be. Okay. And it looks like uh, Mackenzie is here. And Mackenzie, are you represented today? Yes, I am. Okay, perfect. And Mr. Schellinger, are you representing Mackenzie? Yes, uh, Gil Sellinger for the applicant, uh, license number 40150. Thank you. And um, besides, Mackenzie, it looks like we have Carol Johnson and both of you will be giving testimony. Is that right? Carol, are you able to hear us? There we go. Hello. I mute you for one second so there's not a okay maybe give it a second to okay I'm gonna unmute you really quick and let's see if that works okay okay and I go Um, I'm not sure. Are any of you in the same room together? Because sometimes that can happen. Yeah, no. can happen. Okay. Or if she has headphones plugged in and trying to use a speaker. That's true also. Okay. Well, let's all get... Um... Mackenzie's weren't in here, and then we'll see if we can move on to care. Mackenzie, if you'll um, say your name and spell your name and then give an address for me. Mackenzie Turgeon, M A C K E N Z I E, last name T E R Z I A N, and the address of the location is 3303 Bluff Street. Suite RS280302 Boulder. 
Thank you. And then if you'll just raise your right hand for me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? I do. And do you swear or affirm that the premise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? I do. Okay, perfect. And then, Ms. Dalton, let's go ahead and have you unmute and see if it works again. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just gonna mute you so in case anyone has that bonded. Um let me... Ms. Johnson, could you perhaps dial in via your cell phone and get turn off the computer audio? That might be a good option. Sounds like What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Uh, dial in via uh, phone audio. Your phone number. Let's see if we can get that over to you. <laughs> yes, the um the phone number to dial in for phone audio would have been provided in the email that I sent earlier that had like the meeting access information in it. Obviously, it's out of order, but should you wish for us to proceed with the questions of the applicant and then get to the, the petitioning at the tail end? I know it's not how we would normally do things, but happy to do that um, to make sure that we stay on your, your timeline. All right. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that, if the rest of the board is. Okay. Um, before we... Um, move forward with this, um, Mr. Selinger. Are you since are you willing to waive the reading of the into the record? I am. Waived. I am willing. Yes. Okay. And before we proceed, let me just ask the members of the authority if they have any uh, conflicts of interest or ex parte uh, communications. Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Absalom, no. Okay. Uh, then, Mr. Selinger, you can then proceed. Thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to be with you all this afternoon. I'm just jumping down a little bit here. Um, Mackenzie, we're going to dive in a little bit about you. Um, are you TIPS certified? I am both off and on premise. Great. Um, and we provided that certificate to the authority. I do not believe it's included in the uh, the packet, but um, I, I believe Ms. Kellogg said that that was uh, correct there. Um, can you describe the premises for us? Um, the space of the location? Yes, please. Um, and I for the authority, that's on page 37 of the PDF. Um, so the main entrance is off of Bluff Street. Um, when you walk in, there will be a checkout counter directly to your right that will um, have our POS system. Behind that, we'll have shelving that has some liquor, spirits. Um, to the left of the checkout station, we'll have a few islands that will hold wine, non-alcoholic beverages, um, prepackaged snacks, sundries. Um, those will also be located along shelving, um, along the windows. And then on the back wall, we'll have refrigeration with chilled wine, beer, NA beverages, and chilled snacks. Great. Thank you. Um, and what are the proposed uh, operating hours for the business? Uh, it would be seven days a week, 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. And we're applying, you're applying here for a retail liquor license, so there won't be open beverages or any service um, of alcohol on the premises, is that correct? Correct. Um, can you tell us what uh, the number of employees you will have other than yourself? Um, other than myself, we'll have two. So three in total, all of whom will be um, off-premise to certified. And have you hired those individuals yet? Um, we have candidates. Great. Um, and so and you said that you'll do TIP certification, but obviously so that we can uh, catch the authority up. Can you just tell us about the, the status of the build and the, the premises right now and, and the whole development that's going on over there at Bluff Street? Yeah, so um, it's a new development. Um, once we get certified, we'll begin the full build out. 
um, of the space, but there is a tech building there um, called Spark. There are several um, apartments, um, small family apartments, individual apartments, um, as well as a lot of unoccupied retail space. So we would be presumably the first retail location to go into the Spark development. And it's my understanding that there are, there are at least 500 units um, available for rent being built um, for residential occupation in the immediate uh, in the immediate surrounding of the premises. Is that correct? Correct. So it's already built and most of them are already leased out or um, purchased. And when when you and I took a look at the, the data provided by uh, the authority and by liquor pros um, about other liquor licenses in the area, um, everything was in excess of, you know, over uh, 0.7 miles away from the premises. There's no other liquor liquor stores that you know about that are right there in this new development area? Correct. And so for the needs and wants and desires of the, these new residents in this new um, in this new development in Boulder, it would it would be a, a good place for them to be able to walk to and not have to drive to to uh, purchase alcohol. Correct. And there's a lot of um, housing developments over there, a lot of communities in that East Boulder area that don't have um, a bottle shop or a wine shop close by. So on that note, can you tell us a little bit about your planned inventory and how you might be, you know, different than, uh, you know, a large uh, liquor store that might be around in Boulder? Yeah, so um, we would have a big focus on kind of meeting affordability and high quality. Um, we'd carry a large selection of wine and then a slightly smaller selection of beer, non-alcoholic beverages, spirits, um, packaged foods, sundries, things like that. Um, as far as what makes us different than some of the other um, higher quantity liquor stores is we'd really focus a lot on quality and kind of um, showcasing unique smaller brand wines um, as well as spirits and goods. Um, and like I said, we are one of the most furthest east um, bottle shops off of Valmont. So we'd really have a lot of focus for the Noble Park, San Juan del Centro, and Spark neighborhood, all of whom would be able to ride bikes or walk um, to us rather than um, a slightly further transport. Um, you, you've mentioned a bunch of, of reasons for the community and, and especially these developments in Boulder and why you want to open um, this liquor store there. Are you aware of a, an organization in the city of Boulder called the Responsible Associations of Retailers? I am, and um, we would plan on joining that to make sure that we're up to date with all laws and regulations that are changing um, within Boulder and within Colorado. And, and you'll do that, at, you know, once you've once you've opened and you and you're working through all this approved. Um, but prior to that, can um, you do have a written alcohol policy that you provided with your application? We do, yeah, and that would be. Uh, also made available to all of our employees as well as kept behind our checkout counter for people to reference if needed. And so talking about checkout, um, if somebody, anybody comes up to purchase alcohol at, at the front, which is you know, pointing out that there are other sundries available at the store and it's possible somebody could complete a transaction that is without alcohol. But if somebody's coming up and purchasing alcohol, can you talk about the, the procedure for the transaction? Yeah, so we'll be using a POS system called Clover, which does have an integrated scanner in it. Um, so we'd be able to check ID manually, um, name, photo, birth date, expiration date, as well as scan the ID to make sure that it is a legitimate ID. Um, and if that system was down, we would go through the manual process and we'd have an ID guide behind the counter as well that employees would be able to reference to make sure that the ID lines up with the um, way that that state's ID should look. That's great. And and I and knowing that there happens to be this very large campus of, of uh, 
undergrads that from a lot of different states. And so your, your employees might be seeing a lot of different IDs come through. Tell me right. what would happen if the, if the system was down and you were going to do a transaction and the scanner wasn't working, um, how would your, uh, your TIPS certified employee um, proceed with verification of age? So we'd manually check the ID. We'd make sure that um, the name was on there, the photo matched the uh, purchaser, the birth date was on there showing that they're over the age of 21 and that the expiration date was um, not passed. And are you aware with um, specifically with regard to Colorado IDs that there are two different um, orientations of those IDs? Um, we, if, if you're in reference to vertical, and yes, vertical IDs, and, and, yes, we do not accept any vertical IDs of any type. And do you intend to have a, a, a posting of that in addition to regarding Colorado vertical IDs? Yes. Great. Um, I think that. Um, so the, the one other thing we did want to, I did want to specifically address, and you mentioned the large form liquor stores, and I, I wanted to point out to the authority that the, really the closest liquor store to this is Whole Foods. And the reason that we wanted to con con contrast this business is because this is as far from the Whole Foods liquor store as you could possibly get in terms of, of the, the sort of depth and breadth of, of what um, Ms. Turgeon is proposing. Um, I can go through the other retail liquor stores in, in the neighborhood, should there be locate or should there be questions, but um, all of them are, uh, as previously mentioned, a, a larger uh, radius away. I think we could maybe see whether or not Ms. Johnson's uh, able to participate at this point. Hi, Ms. Johnson, are you able to? We'll see if this will work. Could you unmute the cell phone, Caitlin? Yeah, I left the cell phone in and I'm asking it to unmute. So, Ms. Johnson, if you'll unmute on your phone, I think you can push star three. Okay, I have another idea. And then if you'll just give me an affirmative nod, if this is true, I see that you're also in the waiting room as an attendee. So I think you might be on the meeting twice, which could be the issue. If I kick you off the meeting though, you that one that I would kick off won't be able to come back on. Would it be okay if I kicked your other account off? Or maybe, let's see. Could Carol, could you leave and try to you know, leave and then rejoin? Maybe that'll fix the problem. I let the other Carol, let's see. I promoted the other Carol Johnson that's in the waiting room to panelists. Let's see if that works. And nothing's happening there. I'll ask Ms. Johnson to unmute on her cell phone one more time. There's a comment in the questions from a, uh, a later applicant that says there's somebody else from Liquor Pros in attendance that maybe you could let in. Sylvie is also from the same petitioning company. I'm not sure if that would solve it. I don't. He's still be in the waiting room, but if someone else from Liquor Pros is in the attendees, sorry, not a waiting room, in the attendees room, you can raise your hand for me and I'll let you in, see if we can get around it that way. I'm not seeing a raised hand there. Um,
and I just dropped the charger camera off. So I'll see if we can get her back on camera so I can maybe get some affirmative. Okay, there we go. Okay, and if you can just nod yes or no for me, Miss Johnson, are you able to unmute on your cell phone? I don't, I don't, I muted. That's, that's, that's even worse. Okay. Could, could you leave the meeting completely and then try to rejoin Ms. Johnson? Because your, your camera's off now, but if you just leave the whole meeting, that might fix the problem. What did you want me to do now? Could you just exit the meeting if you just leave the Zoom meeting and then rejoin in just as soon as you as you leave? Okay, that one is gone. I I, I don't know. Okay, one second. Mm -hmm. um, see if this works and then. Okay, Ms. Johnson, try to unmute now. Okay. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, great. It's hey. Yeah, I don't know what it was. I didn't do anything. Like I say, I just had two hearings in Fort Collins, and I was fine, so I didn't even move. So, um, okay. Yeah, so. Ms. Johnson, thanks for joining us today. Um, <laughs> Sorry to be a problem. No problem at all. Uh, so we're going to jump back to what was planned to be the, the beginning of the applica application and testimony. Um, if you would go ahead and describe the methodology and uh, area in which you conducted um, petitioning for this application and a summary of your findings, um, and I can see if there's any questions that I have or that the authority has. Okay, I'll try to make it as brief. I've, we've been here a lot of times, but I'll try to go through it. We are a neutral petitioning company and we do- Give not... me just one second, Ms. Johnson. I'm so sorry. I'm going to swear you in before you give testimony. Oh, okay. If you'll just say your name and spell your name for me. Carol Johnson, C-A-R-O-L-J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Great, and then if you'll give an address. 5515 Saddle Rock Place, Colorado Springs. Thank you, and do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? Yes, I do. Great. So I'll uh, renew my question, Ms. Johnson, if you can okay. just summarize methodology and findings of the petition. Okay. Thank you. Okay, well, like I said, we are a neutral petitioning company and we do not guarantee the results. We try to start the closest to the area and radiate out. In this place, in this case, if you look at the map that was provided by Boulder, we did residential areas um, scattered around uh, both the east and west side of the uh, of 28th. Uh, businesses were primarily on the around the location. Uh, we made 74 attempts at businesses for 300 and 380 attempts at residents for 454 attempts. Um, from that, there were 275 that we had no response from. Uh, we had collected 120 total signatures. Uh, there were 29 in support and two in opposition from the businesses and 83 in support and six in opposition for the businesses. So 112 in support and eight in opposition. Um, the reasons for the opposition, four stated no reasons. Three, um, if you look at the notes, it says wrote down reason and valid. One person wrote down too much alcohol and the next two people below them just said same and same. So we did count them as opposition even though they didn't personally write out what they said. Um, and the other one was uh, not my backyard. Uh, so uh, there were 34 who declined to participate. 18 were too busy. Eight do not sign any petitions or surveys and eight were not interested. 24 were not qualified to sign. 10 of those were businesses that did not have an owner or manager available. Seven were under 21. Four did not read or speak English well enough to participate. 
and three were non-residents. If you uh, you have the choice of not considering the one uh, not in my backyard as being an invalid or irrelevant to the needs and desires, and that would bring the numbers to 112 in support for 94% and seven in opposition for 6%. And I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Based on those numbers and your extensive experience, it sounds like you were just doing two other uh, hearings um, earlier today, and we know somebody else from Liquor Pros will be on momentarily to, for the, the next agenda item. No, that's, that's me too. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> um, well, uh, so well, at least we got all the tech problems ironed out. Oh, I'm sorry, um, sorry. Uh, and so those numbers in your experience are, are, are good and favorable in terms of issuance of the, of the license and the needs and wants of the community? Yes, there, there are, because really there were only one that wrote a reason in opposition uh, and they said there were too many and the other, you know, most of them did not even give a reason. So considering that uh, no one was real vocal in opposition with a strong reason, it definitely shows there's a need and desire in the neighborhood for this license. Great. I don't have any further questions for Ms. Johnson uh, to the authority if you do. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, I'll open up to members of the authority if they have any questions for either Ms. Johnson or uh, Ms. Uh, Terzian. I do not have any other questions other than Ms. Johnson. Are your ears okay? Pardon? Oh, my ears? ears? Yeah. yeah. And my dog slept through the whole thing. Okay, perfect. Just making sure there. Um, I I thought that um, Ms. Terzian's testimony was very thorough. Um, that area of town, to me, um, and we talked about this during deliberation, um, is only risky because of those workers coming in from out of state, and that was answered during testimony. So I have no questions. I was trying to figure out what grocery stores or something nearby that would also be complementing the neighborhood and the needs and desires. Do you know of any? Mackenzie, that's a question for you. Um, to my knowledge, there's really not that much that's close in that area. Um, I believe the closest to it, the closest markets are really the Whole Foods market off of Pearl Street and things on 29th Street Mall. Not that that has liquor or wine there, um, but there's really not a lot in that immediate um, facility area. And did you say you were going to be carrying some items like small grocery items and food? Yeah, so along with um, the bottle shop, we'll also be carrying small sundries and goods. So things that you'd find at a general store um, for the community around to be able to purchase um, small things grocery items, packaged food. That's all, thank you. And I had one question um, for, for Ms. Tersian. Um, do you plan on doing any sort of tastings there, wine tastings or anything of that nature? I believe down the line we would do wine tastings, but that wouldn't be a primarily a primary part of the business model. Um, I think I'd have to consult a little bit further um, with our attorney to just see what those um, regulations would be and how they'd fall into place. Yeah, and, and the and the reason I'm asking is because I, I noticed in your liquor policy, it was pretty lightweight at this, this point. Um, and I know you haven't even opened the business yet. Um, but uh, just urging you to join the Responsible Association of Retailers, which you did talk about in your testimony, um, and just to, to beef up that policy, especially if there's going to be any sort of tastings or any anything of that nature. Absolutely, thank you. I have no further questions. All right, seeing nothing else from the, uh, the authority, um, Mr. Selinger, any closing remarks? I uh, None, thank you for your time. Member Carr, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did we check if there was any public comment for this application? Um, 
actually, I don't believe we did. So let's let's ask uh, quickly. Yes, is there any um, public comment uh, for this application? I don't see any raised hand. Neither do I. Any members of the local community? No. Okay. Thanks, Christina. Christiana. Um, all right, and so then we will uh, open this up for deliberation. Um, does anyone on the authority want to talk through this or make a motion? Uh, to your point, Leah, I used to live sort of in that neighborhood. I, the, I think the, the closest like mini mart in that area was like a 7-Eleven down the street. So there's really not much over there. Uh, mm. So this is probably a nice addition to the neighborhood. Yeah, I was glad to hear there will be some food there as well because you always want snacks. Yeah. When you're having drinks. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I thought those. I thought those. I thought Leah. I thought what you talked about was really important. And thank you for bringing up that point. Um, and I think to also to um, member cars, I did that whole neighborhood. I think is kind of looking for a little bit of something like that. Um, and based on Ms. Terzian's testimony, I'm feeling that this could be a responsible vendor for that neighborhood. Absolutely. All right, with that, with that um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> uh, Member Carl will make a motion to approve this, this license. I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor, Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. All right, well, so moved. Thank you very Thank much you for your time. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Ms. Johnson. If you're going to testify for the next minute, you can just stay around. Yeah, I'm half Allison Rose, which I believe is next. And so if, while we got it working, we won't touch anything. <laughs> <laughs> Next is um, agenda item eight, public hearing and consideration of an application filed on April 16th, 2023 from the Mad Hatter LLC, DBA Allison Rose, Mad Hatter on the Hill, 1301 Pennsylvania Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Holly Ellis, member and proposed registered manager and Scott Ellis, member with a business mailing address of 3535 4th Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80304 for a new hotel restaurant type liquor license. Please raise your hand if you're planning on testifying for this one. And while I get everyone in here, I do wanna let the board know that Nathan Dewey is in the attendees list. So if you want to talk to him or if he has anything to say, Nathan, you can just go ahead and raise your hand at some point. But I um, just wanted to let you know. Good afternoon. My name is Charlotte Taylor. I am counsel for the Mad Hatter LLC. Um, next to me is Holly Ellis, who will be testifying today. And also Ms. Johnson is here from Liquor Pros. And for the record, my registration number is 58113. Awesome. Ms. Johnson has already been sworn in, so I will swear in anyone else who's planning on giving testimony for this. Whoever would like to go first, just give your uh, first name, last name, and give and spell it for me, and then give me an address. Mm -hmm. uh, Holly Ellis, H O L L E Y, and last name Ellis, E L L I S. Thank you. And then address? Uh, for the business or the mailing? Whatever you prefer. Both. Um, the business address is 1301 Pennsylvania Avenue. Boulder, Colorado, 80302. Thank you. And do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to provide is true and correct? Yes. And do you swear or affirm that the promise has been posted for at least 10 days prior to today's hearing? Yes. Thank you. All right. And is anyone else planning on testifying today? Just Ms. Johnson and Ms. Ellis. Uh, the other person on the screen is Mike Davidson. He's also counsel for the Mad Hatter LLC. Sounds good. I'll allow the board to proceed. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, counsel, would you be willing to waive the uh, reading of the, uh, the hearing procedures? Yes, thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, and um, before we proceed, I want to ask the members of the board if they have any uh, conflicts of interest or any ex parte contact. Um, Member Carr, no. Member Roberts, no. Member Absalom, no. Okay, and then before we proceed, I just want to ask if there's anyone uh, here who is an interested party uh, who would like to, uh, you know, present evidence from the public or members of the general public who would wish to supply comment at that time. Okay, I'm not seeing any hands raised. So then with that, we will hand it over to, uh, to Council. Could you please restate your name? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. No problem, Charlotte Paylor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we would like to start our presentation by turning it over to Ms. Johnson, just so she can give a brief presentation of her petitioning and uh, the methods and the findings of that petition. Thank you. Um, is this, we are a neutral petitioning company. We do not guarantee our results. Uh, we try to start the closest to the area for residents and businesses. In this case, we did go a little further out uh, be, due to the fact that there are quite a few student housing and student sororities and um, fraternities uh, immediately just north and west of the location. And we do not uh, really do much petitioning in those areas because we realize that a lot of the people are under 21. And so we try to get to the uh, more adult permanent residents of the neighborhood, which sometimes in this particular area are a little further out. Uh, we made 55 attempts at businesses and 300 at residents for a total of 355 and 198 of those had no response. Uh, this petition, the residents were done on Tuesday, May 30th, and the businesses were done on Thursday, June 1st. Uh, the, the circulator had the face sheet with all of the pertinent information, the signature pages provided by the city, and also tally sheets to keep track of the results at each address that they stopped at. Um, there were a total of 116 signatures, 115 in support and one in opposition. Um, there were 30 businesses all in favor, and the residents had 85 in support and one in opposition. The one in support um, is kind of, occasionally get a few little strange comments, but they wrote down that it sounded like too much fun. That's why they were opposed to it. Um, and the rest, the, from what uh, the client had provided our company, it, it sounds like it's a, going to be a, a lot of fun, but not the wrong kind of fun. Um, there were 12 who declined to participate, five who do not sign petitions or surveys, three not interested, three too busy, and one business that was against their company policy. There were 26 who were not qualified, 12 of those were owners and managers that were not available, 11 were under 21, and two were non-residents. So if we take into uh, the reason that the one opposition was that can be considered as invalid or very valid to the needs and desires, in which case this would come out as a petition of 115 as 100% in support of the license. And once again, I would answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much, much Ms. Johnson. I just have one follow-up question. Based on your petitioning, do you think there's a need and desire in the neighborhood for this restaurant? Uh, I think 100% in support of the petitions kind of uh, definitely supports the fact that they uh, are a needed entity in the neighborhood. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. I will defer to the board to see if they have any other questions for Ms. Johnson. Okay, seeing none, seeing some shaking heads, I'm going to uh, switch gears and start um, questioning Holly Ellis. She is a co-owner of the Mad Hatter, Hatter LLC. I first just wanna start off with the restaurant overview of Allison Rose. So today you are applying for a new hotel restaurant liquor license, correct? Yes. What is the address of the restaurant? It's 1301 Pennsylvania Avenue, Boulder, um, Colorado 80302. And uh, would you mind explaining the overall atmosphere of the restaurant just to give the board an idea of how yeah. it feels when you walk in? Yeah, sure. Um, it's a little bit more upscale than what the Hill has typically had. Um, we base the design off of like an old London bakery meets like a Brooklyn fun cafe. 
And so you'll be pretty um, shocked and excited when you walk in, hopefully. Um, we are um, trying to target more of the community. And so we're sitting on the corner where you cross over right toward the university. And we're in that complete flow of tourist traffic as well that passes by our building. And then um, we're gonna be doing like community dinners and stuff like that. So we wanna be nestled in there for a long time. Awesome. Thank you. And is Allison Rose currently open today? It's not open. We're anticipating opening um, the latter part of August. Okay. And what hours and days will the restaurant be open once it's open? We're going to be open seven days a week from seven to 10. Okay. And what kind of food will the restaurant serve? Um, it's a typical restaurant with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but also high tea in the middle. And so breakfast will be known for pastries and coffees and like quiches and then casseroles. Lunch is more salads, um, flatbreads, and then um, high tea is your typical tier tray of like pastries and scones, sandwiches, and then dinner is flatbreads and like pastas, shrimp, things like that. Okay, and will the restaurant staff prepare the meals on site? Yes, everything's prepared on site. Okay, and do you have a food service license for the restaurant? I am in progress myself for my serve safe, but my um, chef does have it already. Okay, and when is the kitchen open during the restaurant's operation? Um, the kitchen will be open the whole time. Okay. And what kind of alcoholic beverages will the restaurant serve if your liquor license is approved? Um, for breakfast, we're looking at Bloody Marys, um, maybe Bailey's and a coffee, and then uh, mimosa, obviously. And then lunch will be, um, we're expecting more like white wine and things of that nature. And then dinner would be more of your cocktail wine atmosphere. Okay, and how will you ensure that each alcoholic beverage contains the recommended amount of alcohol? Um, we're using a, a jigger to measure the alcohol, and then we have a, um, a wine glass that's just standard, and so the staff will be trained on where that, you know, ounce mark is. Okay, and what is the best estimate of the projected ratio between food and alcohol? Um, we're heavy so. food, so our financials have been projected at like a 20% alcohol percentage. Okay. And next, I just kind of want to talk about the process of ordering and receiving alcohol in the restaurant. Will patrons receive alcohol at their table when they're seating, or can you just explain that? A little yeah, bit? it's a table service restaurant, so our servers will deliver the alcohol to the table. Okay, and so they'll, they'll kind of like look at someone's ID and then... Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then... And so they'll be IDing at the okay. table and delivering it directly to that person. To that person. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And then um, as part of your liquor license application, there, in the diagram of the license premises, there's a drink pickup counter. Will alcoholic beverages ever be left at the counter? Uh, no, that's really more of a coffee counter. Okay. And you will be the registered manager for the restaurant, correct? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as the manager, you will be overseeing the day-to-day -day operations, including alcohol-related yes. matters? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have any assistant managers who will supervise the restaurant if uh, you're not present? Uh, yeah, there always will be a manager on site. And um, yeah, we'll have a management team. Okay. And I believe all of your assistant managers will be over 21 years of age. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and just one more question for this portion. And you don't hold any other liquor licenses or any interest in entities that hold liquor licenses? Uh, no, I don't. Correct? Okay. Now I'd want to uh, switch gears a little bit and talk to, about the license premises. The restaurant's located on the first floor of the building. Is that right? That's right. Okay. And you lease the space? I do. Okay. Does the restaurant have a patio? It does. So will alcohol be allowed within the restaurant and the patio? Uh, yeah, just the like the premises only. Okay. Yeah. Which in the drawing shows the restaurant and the patio, correct? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And can you uh, briefly explain how the patio is enclosed? Yeah, the patio has a rail surrounding it. So it can seat up to 14 people. And so you have to go upstairs to enter into the patio. So it's not something where you can um, even reach the tables from the sidewalk. It's quite a bit uh, off the ground. So it's raised up and there's clear entrances to it. And there's no, um, you have to go out only one exit. Yeah, because is it, it's surrounded by rails. Yeah, correct? the whole thing is okay. surrounded by rails. Okay. And is the patio visible from inside the restaurant? Oh yeah, we have full glass front so we can see really well onto the patio. 
Okay. And are you going to use any additional measures to kind of monitor patrons on the patio? Yeah, they have their own designated servers for that area. Okay. And now I just want to talk a little bit about alcohol storage. Do you have a locked vessel for alcohol storage? Uh, yeah. Okay. And how will you inventory inventory your alcohol just to make sure consumption is matching? How much well, the alcohol count, we count the bottles of unopened like champagne and wine every night just to make sure that things are being filled correctly and managed correctly. But um, also the um, we are using toast and they have like an inventory system for the amount of ounces that your liquor should have based on your sales. And so we can monitor that way as well. Okay, and just to cl clarify, you understand that alcohol can only be served in licensed premises, which is the first floor of the building and the patio, is that correct? Yeah, I understand. Okay, so I now wanna switch gears a little bit and talk about training and policies. Can you explain if you have any experience in the restaurant industry or serving alcohol? I do have um, alcohol experience um, in my college. I was in charge of um, training all the party monitors at my university. And so I'm familiar with those kind of processes. This is my first venture as an adult into um, after college into this, but we are a member of the um, RAR and we work with them on our alcohol policy. And we've talked in depth about doing the training on site for all of the employees, but also taking it a little further and um, doing training into like, how to know if it's a fake ID, how to handle it if someone arrives to your site already overserved, and um, procedures like that. That's really important to us. Great, thank you. And you've kind of already covered this, but just to make sure you kind of joined Responsible Association of Retailers to yeah. make sure you have enough knowledge in this. Oh, yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah, serving alcohol safely. Okay. And um, you mentioned this as well. Uh, Responsible Association of Retailers helped draft your alcohol policy and yeah. planning on mm -hmm. coming to site to train yeah. you and your employees. Okay, so to clarify, are you and your entire staff going to be tips trained? Yeah, all of the staff is going to be tips trained. We're not hiring anyone under 18. And um, our point of sale system also tracks that certification. So if someone's coming in with tips training already, we will do a brush up on the two extra things, the fake IDs and how to deal, like how to tell the signs of someone who has been served alcohol before they come to you. And so all of that is tracked. Um, okay, perfect. For us. And have you hired any employees for the restaurant yet? Um, I've hired my chef so far. Okay, and so when do you um, plan to hire employees? I think it's set for three weeks. Okay, from now. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so your point of sale will track if your employee, any employees are kind of running on, on the oh, clock yeah. and about to need yeah. recertification. Yeah. Okay. It has a certification area to alert us if someone is um, expiring or needs training. Okay, and how will you ensure that patrons are not overserved at the restaurant? Um, we are working with Nathan from RAR on those policies on how to tell how many drinks and based on, um, I guess, their physical attributes of what's what they're presenting. Okay, and how are you going to track how many drinks the patron has when they're at the restaurant? Our point of sale system does have a tracking for that, but also those servers will be responsible and trained to track that as well. Okay, and how will you and your staff um, respond if someone inebriated asks a request for a drink? Um, they'll, we just will say no. Okay, and what is your policy if someone's too intoxicated, either they show up too intoxicated to your restaurant? Um, well, we refuse service on all counts for that, but we would also um, like help them, you know, get home. Okay. Give them a coffee. And are you aware of the city's requirement that all employees need to be trained within 60 days of obtaining a liquor license? Yes. Okay. And so you're going to make sure that all your employees are trained within 60 days of when your liquor license is approved or 60 days from when the employee is hired, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And what is your plan going to be if one of your employees fails to abide by your alcohol policies or information they learned in their training? For example, they were served when they shouldn't have been served or your employee forgot to ask for a notification. Um, I mean, they're terminated if they serve someone without IDing them. And then the rest, um, I guess it would depend on the situation, but we take it very seriously. Okay. 
In addition to having um, all the internal policies and procedures we just talked about and that you'll have in place, are you going to require your staff to maintain responsible vendor training for the Boulder ordinances and rules, correct? Oh, yeah. Okay. And based on kind of all the testimony we talked about today, as well as Ms. Johnson's testimony, would you agree that the restaurant, there is a need and desire for the restaurant in the community? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Ellis. And just to kind of end it, um, is there anything else you would like the board to know about your restaurant? My chef is really great. <laughs> I hope you guys come. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? No, I think that's... Um... Good. Okay, well, thank you very much for your time and consideration. That's I have no further questions on our end. Thank you for your testimony. Um, members of the board, do you have any questions uh, for anyone? I don't have any other questions. I really do appreciate you working with Mr. Dewey and RAR um, and just just a continued consideration around where you are. Um, that location, you are right next to the sink and you're right next to a huge throwaway between all the bars and campus. Um, I, I do understand your concept for a high afternoon tea doesn't necessarily care to you know, specific um, sorority or frat crowd. That being said, it's a very touchy area and just keeping that very um, at your forefront when you're, when you're serving alcohol in that area. Yeah, thank you. I have nothing else. All right. Um, all right, Ms. Uh, Ms. Paler, do you have any final comments? That's all on our end. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. So I'll then open it up for uh, deliberation between the members of the board. What are you two thinking? Anything you wanted to share? That location, I just, I, that's the one thing. I But I mean, they really stepped up the, every system that they have in place. I mean, when we start to hire and start training, that's when we really start to see and make sure that that's happening. But to me, that that's a bulletproof um, application right there. Yeah, I really like seeing that they have worked with the with the RAR um, in their, their the policy. I thought the policy was looked really good, uh, and just some of the technological things that your team will be using with Toast and everything to monitor your drinks and all that. That's that's uh, that's next level, and uh, more businesses should should be doing that. So, thank you. Um, I'll make a motion to approve this license. Go ahead, Mark. <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead, Member Roberts. I'll second it. All right. All in favor, Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. So moved. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you Bye. very much. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Dewey's in the attendees list. I'm going to promote him to panelists so he can chat with you guys. Looks like he raised his hand, so I guess I'm going to say. Cool. All right. Can anybody hear me? No? Yeah. How are you? Cool. Oh, I'm all right. Um, had some child care issues today, so sorry about being late. Um, so yeah, first and foremost, before I forget, just, I'm going to reemphasize what, what Mike just said there, Mr. Absalom, um, Holly called me uh, probably even a couple months ago now to my recollection time has gone by so fast and she has a bulletproof plan. She knows what area she's in and I will be concentrating on the staff. I'm meeting with her staff as soon as it's hired, um, going in there personally and having a discussion with them just because that is a very volatile area I, as you all are talking about. And as much as. They want to keep it high tea time. We all know what crowd might wander into there. So um, that's definitely something we will be discussing. So yeah, great. Glad you guys approved and everything. I think they're going to be a great member and great for the community. Um, other than that, uh, we did have our fake ID training last, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago with Officer Denig. Um, went really well. Didn't have the numbers we had the last time, but you know, I think everything's been different since COVID. <laughs> And that includes staffing issues and managers and owners having to stay home even during member meetings. So we're really trying to, to ramp that up, but we did have a good turnout and we're gonna get Officer Dunning to probably do it one more time before he's out and um, 
just because I think everybody who does go to it sees the value in it. And that is something I'll be teaching like colleague staff, for example, um, everything Officer Dunning does. And I, I learn something new every time I, I host one of those. So it, it's great not only for me, but for the members and to be able to um, really pass that on in the tips trainings, because I do small little just, you know, fake ID trainings during my tips trainings now as well. Um, so other than that, our air is going good. I'm really hitting hard on the cannabis side of things. Um, I'm supposed to be presenting the first of the month with C-Lab. So if you have any C-Lab counterparts, my BLA members and, and panelists, put in a good word for us, please. Um, it's been a slow roll getting in there and uh, would be great to have the approval from C-Lab like I have from all of you. Um, and you know the good work we've done there on the alcohol side of things. So just saying, if you know someone on that panel, if you might, you know, just whisper something in their ear for me, okay? Um, but other than that, I think we'll just show them, just like we've shown you all, you like the good work we're doing and, and getting good members like Holly and, and everybody else. And I really appreciate your recommendations for people joining us. Um, and I just had a quarterly meeting with the SEA, which is the, the folks who fund us to keep those dues down. And they're really happy with our work. And um, yeah, so we got a good, good, good rating from them after quarter two. And we're doing the quarter three schedules and quarter four will come quickly after that. So, I mean, we're halfway through the year and things are doing great. Oh, by the way, just so you all know, which is great too, my trainings are packed full, like pre-COVID. It's wonderful. The last three trainings, I've had 25 to 36 people. And that's amazing. That means people are hiring and that's even during summer. So it's pretty awesome. Um, and we're back in the Boulder library because it looks like they finally cleaned up those bathrooms and my attendees can go to the bathroom now. It's just a better location. Um, they've got all the technology we need and everybody can rely that we're there. So I've scheduled myself out there for the next six months uh, as well, because that's as, as much as I can do. So that's another thing. Um, always invite you guys, if you ever want to check out a training, come on by. I'll let you know when it is. And other than that, if you have any questions, let me know. But I think things are going really well. Thanks for the updates. It's great to hear. No questions. Thanks again for all you do. All right. Thank you. Um, and Nathan, feel free to stay around if you want. I'll just leave you on here. Um, and then agenda item nine is matters from Assistant City Attorney. And Christiana, I think, wants to talk about the memo that was sent. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Caitlin. Uh, so, uh, members of the Beverage Licensing Authority, we have a new uh, bill that passed in the Colorado legislature this 2023 legislative session, um, and it just makes a few changes to the art gallery permit uh, for liquor licenses. The main changes, as you can see in the memo, are really changing the name of the permit. It's going from art gallery permit to retail establishment permit. Um, and it's expanding um, the availability of that type of permit to more businesses than just art galleries. Um, so art galleries are, are still a type of business, a type of retail establishment that can apply for this permit, but they have expanded it a little bit. Um, the other thing is that they've included some new uh, prohibited activities, um, just more limitations on what's permitted by um, for permit holders uh, and they increase the application. So uh, we're bringing this up to you guys now. Uh, not only does it affect uh, you know, state law, but it'll impact us a little bit as well. Uh, there are a couple of changes that we need to make um, to the Boulder Revised Code and also to the um, BLA Rules of Procedure. And they're pretty simple changes. Um, mostly it's just changing the name over to the correct permit name. Um, and these changes are all uh, going into effect on August 7th, 2023. Um, and the only other change is really the increase uh, for, for the city side, at least, is the uh, increase in the application free fee from 100 to $200. Um, so we wanted to bring that to your attention. Um, show you what the red lines to the BLA rules would look like. Um, like I said, they're pretty simple. It's a change to the table of contents, to the name of the art gallery permit, um, and also then to section 9-3, um, changing that name over as well uh, to the new name, uh, with the intent, again, to have this in effect by about August 7th. Um, and then we'll be doing an ordinance 
in conjunction with a resolution going in front of city council to um, finalize all those changes. Um, I am happy to answer questions. Yeah. Yeah, my just question around this is that, you know, you can see any retail establishment. Does that change um, special event permit, permitting for certain establishments? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. The, the bill itself doesn't address any changes to special event permits. Um, so anything that is currently applicable to special event permits is still applicable to special event permits. Got it. So, I mean, if I were, if I had an establishment like this, I could essentially go for a retail establishment permit versus a special establish or a special event permit. I guess there's just a little bit of a gray area to me around that, but I, I don't, I don't know how much that affects us, but it's just, it's strange. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I saw after um, I provided the materials to Caitlin to put in the, uh, to send you all that I highlighted, I left a highlight in that I meant to take out, but that highlight is actually, um, or could be useful in the bill itself. That's the second attachment um, in the memo um, to the memo. Sorry, I will find the page here really fast, um, but you can't hold, I think what you said, Member Absalom, about one or the other is right, because um, one of the new rules is that you can't, if you get a retail establishment permit, you can't hold another um, license under the Title Three or Four, um, not, not Title Three or Four, Chapter Three or Four um, under Title 44. So that's one of the things. Um, and I think, although uh, honestly, Kristen might be a better person to talk about special events in particular um, at this point, but um, you know, I, I imagine that this is just a different type of permit. It allows for you know, special events are more temporary things, right, Kristen? Um, or yeah, Go yeah, ahead. it 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 has been the case that we've issued special event permits for fundraising events held at retail stores, which may now be eligible for this type of permit instead. Um, so there, we could see some transition from um, events held at stores historically under special event permits now held under this retail establishment permit. So that's, that's a potential change um, that's still to be, to be seen. Mike, is that, does that answer your question? It does. Yeah. It just sounds like we will kind of find ourselves in some of that gray area potentially down the road. Not that I, I don't know how it is affecting us as an authority to make decisions around whether or not we want to approve either the one or the other, but I was, I just was looking for clarity, but thank you for that. And, and to that point, as far as like what the authority would do, it would depend on what the applicant applies for, right? So if they're applying for a special event permit versus a retail establishment permit, you just take their application and apply the criteria and go from there, right? Yeah, yeah and one, one difference that I just wanted to highlight for the board too, um, between special event permits and this retail establishment permit is um, special event permits are typically handled administratively by staff without a public hearing. Um, our rules do state that the retail establishment permit would require public hearing. Um, so there's the potential that the board will be seeing more of these applications um, than we have in the past. We, we're not this, planning to process them administratively. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say one, one of the things, it seems like this is like a almost extended special event permit where you can serve alcohol, but there's like a limited amount of times per year. Um, but it maybe it per keeps a business or an organization from having to continue to apply for a special event permit, something of that nature. Exactly. Yeah. That's yep. so what it looks like. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So um, from, from you guys, we would uh, really appreciate it if um, you all made a motion to approve or recommend approval of the changes to the BLA rules that we can, you know, take that recommendation to city council for when they consider a uh, resolution to approve the changes as well. I'll make a motion to recommend um, the changes to the BLA rules of procedure according to the new statute. And member Carl will second that motion. 
All in favor? Member Carr, aye. Member Roberts, aye. Member Absalom, aye. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Christiana. Okay. Um, next, we have agenda item 10, boundaries from licensing clerk. We have two boundary settings for today. Um, for the, um, sorry, for the July hearing, I didn't change one of my notes. Um, the first one is for Book Cliff LLC, DBA Book Cliff Vineyards, for a new distillery pub type liquor license application at 1501 Lee Hill Drive, Unit 17, Boulder, Colorado, 80304. I couldn't find any comparable boundaries for this, so I will share my screen so you guys can see. Is, is Upslope up there? Is there a tap room right there? There yeah. is. So I don't, I think that's, I mean, that's a different type of license, but I think there might be boundaries for that. Um. So that's a brewery and those are all licensed by the state. So we actually don't oversee that license. Oh, oh they don't have a brew hub license there? No, and I can see that. Right. But you're absolutely correct. It is right here. Right there. This is kind of an interesting one because it's so far up there. <laughs> so how yeah. far do city limits go? So um, not... I wish I knew, but I. Yeah. I would suggest probably just to that point we're working at city limits a, a lot, around a lot of this to the west and north maybe. Yeah, I, and to the east. Yeah, and to the east as much. Yeah. yeah. And then to the south, you could take it all the way down to that neighbor because you want to get that neighborhood that's right there, like south of Lee Hill Drive, all the way. You know, if you went all the way west. The city limits, and you could go all the way south to Yarmouth. I don't know if that's too big. I was even thinking Violet Ave, but it, it might be too yeah. big. Like Violet, uh, Violet. I might be right yeah. because I think we just get more because there's just not that much residential in there. Right. So Violet to the south, and then city limits on the north, city limits on the west and east. I I would second that. Okay. Okay, so just to make sure we're doing um, city limits on north, east, and west, and then Violet Avenue on the south. Yes. Yes. Okay, and then I'll leave this up, but the next one is much easier. <laughs> uh, the next one is for Bacon Love LLC, DBA, Black Belly Market for a modification of premise for a hotel restaurant type liquor license at 1606. Um, Constanza Street, Suite 3, Boulder, Colorado, 80301. Um, they actually did a modification in 2016. So I pulled the premise, or I'm sorry, the suggested boundaries for that. And that was um, on the north, it was Pearl Parkway Extended. South was Baseline Road, East City Limits, and West Foothills Parkway. I'm fine with using those. Yeah, I would make a second to go with those same exact boundaries for the previous modification. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next thing that we have is an um, administrative processing of a transfer application. This is just for your information. It's um, Masses Boulder Inc. DBA Masses and Agaves transfer of a hotel restaurant type liquor license at 909 Walnut Street, Boulder, Colorado, 80302. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's just an FYI for you. And then next we have we have one um, permanent sales room. And I actually do have Trevor Johnson here, who is the licensee for this. Um, so I'm going to let him, um, we're programming him to panelist. And if you guys have any questions for him, you can go ahead and ask. This is for Black Cat Brewing LLC, DBA Black Cat Brewing. Application for a permanent Colorado liquor sales room at 5763 Arapahoe Avenue, Boulder, Colorado, 80303. Awesome. And do we still need to read the same policies in? 
Um, not for this one. This one is just the board kind of just gives um, the okay to the state to issue okay. this license. So um, if you guys have any like operational questions or anything like that for Trevor, you can feel free to ask. Um, that's typically what's happened in these with these applications. They don't come up very often. So um, that's kind of so basically yeah. the plans. Just yeah, in the in the past, what we've looked at is other licenses in that area because we the state approves that license. So we kind of look at like how that would affect the community and the other licensees that we've worked with. And I'm just looking at the map right now. I looked at the drawing um, and it looked pretty, pretty good to me. Um, and where they're located here, I think, is very similar to where um, the old Avery Taproom used to be back in the old, old days. Um, but yeah, I didn't have any questions. This looks good to me. Um, and just looking at the location, I think there's it's it's a space that probably could use a, a great brewery that is run responsibly. Cool. I, I didn't have any specific questions. Uh, Trevor, did you have anything you wanted to share with us? Um, no, we are in the old Avery location. Uh, Avery moved their tasting room a few times and we have their original brewing equipment. So it's been a brewery for 30 years. Um, not anticipating any problems, just looking forward to building community and creating jobs. You have the original Avery Brewing equipment. Wow. That's yeah. Pretty cool. Thank you. Hope to see you there. <laughs> when do you plan on opening? Um, well, I acquired the space at the end of 19, right before COVID. It's been pretty rough. Um, <laughs> sooner, sooner than later, you know. Got it. Yeah, no questions on my, my behalf, no other questions. Uh, good luck. I don't know if anyone else has any other questions. No other questions. Great. So we will um, send that to the state with our okay. Um, and then the only other thing I have for matters from licensing clerk is that, and I apologize, I didn't put this on the agenda, but um, board of recruitment, maybe your board recruitment has reopened. So we are recruiting for the fourth member, I'm sorry, the, yeah, the fifth member of the BLA. Um, board recruitment ends on July 2nd. Um, I have sent a couple emails regarding board recruitment out to the community. Um, and I did um, put all of you on there. So if you know of anyone, please feel free to forward those emails. If you need more information from me, please let me know. Um, we're really hoping that we can get one more person. I thought we needed more than that. I thought we needed two more people. And then Mike, are you staying on? Yeah, I think if we get one more, it would be me. Um, I do have plans to um, leave to move abroad in the fall. Um, those, obviously, I'll keep you posted. Um, licensing about how, how far that goes. My term ends next year, which I think would end in February of next year, maybe. Um, so if I don't know if it goes through the whole calendar year. Either way, as long as I'm in Boulder, I will be a part of this authority. That, that being said, I my plans are to leave in either October or November um, to, to head abroad to Mexico. Cool. Um, great. So currently there's only one vacancy, but if Member Absalom were to vacate his, his seat, then there that would create that other. Uh, uh, but as it stands, Member Absalom's um, term ends in 2024. Oh, right. If Matthew's not here. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I'm jealous. Matthew's here. Matthew's term goes to 2025. I mean, Michael, you're the newest member of the board. I think I am. I can tell you right now. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Or maybe we started at the same time or something. Very we started around the same time. Yeah. yeah. Let's see. Believe me, I'm trying to get people to jump on and, and volunteer for this. Fine. Yeah, I'm surprised because some of the other boards get so many applicants. Yeah. Yeah, I was kind of bummed that um, that we didn't can I, get. Can I jump in here? Sorry to do sure. Do you guys want me to put up? I'll put out announcements that you guys are looking to the members because maybe there's a member who wants to help out. Thank you, Payton. I'll re forward this email to you. You might have been Thanks. On. I'm sure you were, but. Um, I'll forward that information to you. And yeah, that would be really helpful if you could do that. I really appreciate that. Yeah, because I'm kind of surprised you guys are having such a hard time too. So let's get some word out to some people who 
genuinely care. Yeah, wouldn't you yeah. be shocked that operators in the community who have liquor licenses and are yeah, like, I'm just I don't know. I mean, Mike, like I said, dude, it's kind of been strange, man. Like yeah. uh, the, the member meetings are the lowest I've ever had in years, and that's from every community. Like the owners are literally working when they should have staff working. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where that's just their free time. You know, they're like, well, in my free time, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go to the beach or, <laughs> you know, or whatever. But I have, so, I, I, I have to say something that, and I know this is not popular, but I think it's also directly linked to um, the amount of enforcement. So if there was more show causes happening to people, you would probably yeah. see a lot more involvement in these type of things. We're back, yeah, we're back out there again, but I know it's been a struggle for them to get people to. It's just a hiring issue. It's funny, man. Like it's harder for me to find reliable people to go and do that kind of fake sting we do. It shocks me because it's like I had four years before COVID and four years after, and the four years after have been more of a struggle for me than the four years prior to. So it's just weird. It's just weird. Um, and I know Officer Denick has struggled hiring people to do that or whatever research, resource they do. And even Fort Collins Police just started it back up this year. So, but I'll keep pushing them and I'm, I'm standing in stings, dude. <laughs> so <laughs> people are getting stung by me now. But yeah, but all right, I'll put that out there. Yeah, Caitlin, just give me that um, email and we're good to go. Perfect. I forwarded it to you. Thank you so much. All right. Call. Yeah, yeah, no worries. And just so everyone knows, so member Alpha term is up in 2024. Member Califano's term is up in 2025. Member Carr, yours is up in 2027. And member Roberts, yours is up in 2026. So that's what we're looking at for terms. So, um, and I believe that is it for matters from the licensing clerk. So next, unless Kristen, did you have anything? No, thank you, Caitlin. Um, next, and our last item is members from the chair, uh, matters from the chair and members of the authority. Excuse me. I don't have anything today. Does anyone else have anything? I just had one thing um, that I noticed and I was trying to implement it without talking about it. This might be a rules thing if we go this route, but I was trying to go in order of how we say yay or nay. I was just waiting for Leah to go. Like, I, kinda... I know, we usually go alphabetically, but... So then I was like waiting for you, but then I realized, okay, we're just going to go me this whole time. Okay. And <laughs> because, because, you know, Michael was, yeah, I know. Like, he was the one who, whoever chairs is always going to be the first one to be like, okay, you know, there's a motion and then approves it. Um, I was just, it gets, uh, it'll be better when we're in person, but it just gets real sloppy. <laughs> Who's, who talks next? The, uh, I like alphabetical. Then I know I'm always last, and I'm really cool with that. <laughs> so the chair starts, and then we go alphabetical. We we can just that's not we can't make a rule around that. I know that right. We know what we're saying, but no, maybe. just a an order. Just, just something to think about. I'll, I'll we'll, we'll check that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Well, just it's, we're not talking over each other and everything else. Yeah. yeah. Well, what is it? If I make a motion. Someone makes a motion. Someone seconds it. And then the person who made the motion says all in favor, aye. And then the person- well, the chair. The chair. The the chair, chair makes I guess because yeah. it's such a small group, it's always just like- Yeah, so if, if Matthew's the chair, it would go Matthew, right. then me, then Mike, and then you, Leah. And every yeah. time we do that, because Matthew would be the first one to say something. And then we'd go alphabetical by last name. I'm, I'm into that. I mean, again, this can't be a rule. You can go in any order you want, but- just a thought. If we start talking at the same time, then yes, we know who can go. <laughs> I, I like the idea just to keep things consistent. Yeah. That's all I had. I'd make a motion to adjourn. I will second, second that motion. <laughs> 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 you the rules, yeah. But it's not alphabetical for oh, that. Oh, that's right. Not for seconds. I not thought alphabetical. he was tricking me. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Lee, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, I'll second. I'll second it. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Guys. Thanks, guys. Have a great Thanks, day. guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.